Hello, hello. So the previous video was about the migration from the MySQL to the Postgres. And there are many like requests, like how can I migrate here and there, but I believe most of the people who are thinking and actually doing the migration to the Postgres SQL for the Zabbix are also thinking about the timescale database support. And to use timescale DB, you actually need to have the Postgres. And um, long story short, what's the benefit of the timescale database? First of all, native partitioning, like Housekeeper can be bad for the large installations and just too heavy operation for the database because it is running delete statements. Instead, you can use a partitioning. If you don't have a timescale DB, then you need to write your own script, manage that through the cron and, and whatsoever. But with a timescale DB, it is basically a native functionality. And the second thing is compression. So if you want to store a lot of the history, by storing the raw data, it will take a lot of the disk space, but with the timescale DB, you can actually uh, compress everything and save something like up to five times of the disk space. And uh, for this tutorial, I do have a Zabbix installation of 7.0rc1, so the stable release is not yet released, but it doesn't matter at this point. I do have uh, Alma Linux, uh, cat, let's see. Uh, Red Hat release uh, 9.4, right? And uh, so yeah, Zabbix server with a Postgres. Postgres SQL is already installed and the version of the Postgres is uh, 16. And actually this tutorial about a timescale DB configuration, uh, in this video we're continuing to chase the tutorial of the initmax wiki page because they have a beautiful guide about the migration from mysql to the postgres which also includes uh, the timescale database configuration because well usually those two things are done at once but uh, i wanted to split those videos so the first video released like a week ago where something was about the migration part and now here we go with the timescale database. So I will leave the link in the description. And if you feel lost somewhere, like because this tutorial assumes that you already have the sources downloaded on your uh, system, it's done in the first step somewhere above the here. I already have it done on my virtual machine. So uh, yeah, you just need to download the sources. It's nothing complicated. So installation and tuning. After you've successfully migrated from MySQL to the Postgres, you are also offered the opportunity to increase the performance of the Zabbix even further using timescale database. And the main advantage of the performance is exactly because the native partitioning so you can get rid of the housekeeper given that you already have unzipped the file with a source code at your disposal which is what we done in one of the first steps of this tutorial which also contains the database installation schemas for the timescale db you can proceed with the installation straight away so we don't need anything extra uh, the only thing that we need let's add the official repository of uh, the timescale database and uh, we can basically just copy this one um, what essentially it does like i i'm not sure if there is the timescale database in the Alma Linux repository, official one. I think it's not there. So what we're doing, we're adding the official repository of the timescale DB to pick up uh, the latest and greatest version of this uh, extension. So copy paste, click enter, should be done. Um, then let's go back, install the necessary packages. So what we will be doing here, uh, install the times timescale to Postgres SQL 16 and timescale DB to loader Postgres SQL 16 and run the timescale DB to utility and as a parameter pass it a higher value of the maximal number of the connection. So yeah, we'll do that later. So yum install, uh, copy paste here and I will add minus uh, yes to confirm all the installation. This will probably take a couple of minutes. So after the installation is done, we can proceed with the actual tune and we can verify that uh, the PG config is actually here. Uh, I'll type in LS. Uh, so yeah, and uh, timescale DB tune max cons. Uh, 125. So the location of the config file is the varlib Postgres SQL 16 data Postgres SQL .conf, which is default. So yes, uh, shared 
actually here we have example like uh, share preload libraries you need to answer yes next say yes uh, tune memory parallelism and wall I will comment about this tuning like a bit later so right now let's just do yes 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 and uh, here it's also yes and yes and also yes so everything is done so the tuning is absolutely necessary for your database no matter if you're running a mysql or a postgres or a mariadb or oracle or whatever else you cannot uh, work in a production with a default database configuration file and a tuning usually is a big problem to the zabbix users because it does require some uh, database knowledge and understanding and for someone who is not who has doesn't have a good experience with a database um tuning the config file could be very challenging and there's like a lot of different parameters and you also need to figure out like what the value is the best and each of those parameters also has some synergy with other parameters so you really need to understand what you're doing and there are two options either like a lot of reading of course in the documentation you will find information about all of them but it will not give you the best result where you can run this uh, PG tune um, automated, like I don't know if it's script or tool that basically, based on your system resources that are available, like here on on my Linux server, uh, suggests what is the recommended optimal configuration file and configuration parameters. And as you can see, it recommends, then verifies with you, like are you okay to use these config parameters? If you say yes, it like overrides the configuration file, like saving changes. And uh, to be honest, I don't think that this is like 100% a perfect config file tune, but it is definitely better than leaving it at uh, default values. And it is definitely better, better than something you will come up to without any knowledge. So if you're not a good expert or whatever in a Postgres or any other database engines, use the PG tune. If you are, I think it's better to work, uh, work through yourself like and, and, and find the correct parameters that you need to use for this installation and what are also the correct values. So after this, let's shut down the Zabbix server. Uh, we are doing that basically just because we are restarting um, database server as well. Uh, so systemctl stop Zabbix server. This should be done fast. Uh, this is done. And then uh, we are restarting the database basically just because we uh, did a lot of things right now and we also applied the new configuration file. So activate the timescale database for the Zabbix database. Echo create extension if not exists. Uh, timescale db cascade uh, sudo minus u postgres uh, db name uh, Zabbix. So this is copy paste no matter of where you are located right now. Create extension. This is done. And the next one, load the data from the extracted database schema file. And uh, this is the one, like if you join to this video without doing the first one, you need to have the sources. And inside the sources, uh, you need to download, of course, the correct version of the Zabbix server that you have. Uh, there's going to be a folder database, Postgres, SQL, Timescale, DB, and schema.sql. So I will copy paste this and execute it here. Uh, it is located in my case in the TMP, so I can do just uh, copy paste and the password for the Zabbix is Zabbix, uh, no, no such file or directory, uh, ls TMP Zabbix DB migration, what do we Zabbix 7.0, ah, uh, we just need a different path, it's not the better one but RC1. So there we go. Password is Zabbix. And uh, this is done. Uh, migrating data to chunks. Timescale DB is configured successfully. This is done. Create extension and load the data. Okay. Uh, we have the same results. So now we can start the Zabbix server 
utility not a utility sorry the zabbix server and uh, basically we're done uh in case you see messages in the zabbix server log file that the timescale db version is too new then at the time of writing this tutorial this is not a problem zabbix has not yet responded to the latest version of timescale db by setting it as supported in its code but compatibility compatibility has been verified by us this will be fixed in the future version so let's check the log uh, less var log sabix sabix server dot log um, times kill db version is too new so yeah it's just it's gonna be fine you can use it like uh, in in the zabbix source code there are the minimal version of the database that you can use and the maximal version and usually like time scale releases a new version and it takes some time for the zabbix to actually update the code so it's fine to use it it's just a matter of the zabbix to update the maximal supported version if you want to avoid in in oh my god why it's so complicated incompatibility messages in the zabbix log file then you just need to open the server config file and change this allow uh, unsupported db versions to want to basically like okay whatever i understand what i'm doing and and yeah i'm gonna still use uh uh, yeah, we were not able to start it without changing this config file. So vi etsy zabbix server dot conf um, allow unsupported db version. So copy this, paste, and change zero to one. And let's save it. Systemctl restart zabbix server and uh, now we can check the log file again so i previously did not notice that uh, uh basically in the log file it was not running it was uh, showing the unsupported and then stopped you see here unsupported database uh, is newer required mandatory blah 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 and uh stopping zabbix server but here right now after changing the config file everything is fine so and that's all you have now learned how to migrate the zabbix database from mysql to the postgresql you have also managed to get the powerful timescale db and running and you have basic performance tuning the next step should lead you towards backing up and monitoring uh, the database right so that's it how you configure the timescale db on your zabbix thank you for watching see you later don't forget to subscribe and write something in the comment see you later guys